Hi, I'm Bill Sharp, and we're going to uh, look at the first version of the software I've, I'm developing for retirement income scenario forecasting and analysis. So we start, we'll go to the Scratch site at MIT, and here we are. Now we'll do a search on WF Sharp. Let's see what I have posted. And there is the only one. So we'll open that. And notice that it says start by pressing the green flag, follow the instructions, press the up arrow key for more information. And for faster speeds, press the shift and green arrow. We'll do all of that. You'll see it's loading. Now it's loaded. And to make it most effective, we'll go to full screen and press the green flag. You can do it either here or down there. And you see at the moment, it's very sparse. There are two buttons, one for settings and one for an action. And in later versions, there'll be several buttons on the left for settings and on the right for actions. So let's start with the settings. And first of all, if you press the up arrow on your keyboard, you will get a message. That message will be context sensitive, so it will depend on where you are. Uh, although when you're actually changing settings, you won't be able to do this. And you can turn that on and off by just pressing the up arrow on your keyboard. So let's go to client settings and you see the instruction. If you're happy with the setting as it is, press return. When you're done, um, you can go back to the main menu. If you want to save the new settings for later use, you'll need to save the whole project, the whole program, which you would have to do on your own account, either on Scratch or on your computer. Once you've created an account on Scratch, you can do all these things. And notice that it says the help key, that's the up arrow, is disabled, nothing happens. Okay, so let's look. The last name, it tells you what's in there now. So the current setting is Smith, and let's say we need to change it to Jones. And your name is not Bob, it's really Sam. And you're not 66, you're 67. And you're a male. Uh, your partner's name is Sally. And she is 63, so we could just leave that. She's female, we could leave that. Just So I'm pressing the return key to leave it. And the current year is 2013. Okay, so we ha now have our settings in the client. And, and the image here is that you are the client of banks, financial advisors, and others who are providing for you different kinds of retirement income. So, ready to go. Let's press the longevity graph for some action. And what you're seeing is a graph being formed. We'll, f we'll do it more quickly in a minute, but it's useful to see it being formed slowly. On the horizontal axis, we have the future year starting from zero, if you will, from the first year. Um, and the probability of various possibilities in terms of which one or both of you would be alive. And there you see that the years run through 58. The vertical grid lines are in units of five years. And then the vertical axis shows you the probability of being alive 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, up to 100. So what are the bars? Well, the legend tells you the green bars show for each year the probability that both of you will be alive in that year. The blue bars show the probability that only you would be alive in that particular future year. And the red line, red bars, show the probability that only your partner will be alive. And 
you can see some fairly predictable properties here. The probability of, say, both of you being alive falls through time um, in future years as the mortality takes its toll. The probability that only you, which in this case, if you'll recall, you're a male of 67 years old, probability that you will be alive without your partner is relatively small. It gets a little larger, not because you're more likely to be alive, but because the probability of your partner not being alive comes into play. But you can see that that probability is relatively small and, of course, eventually gets to be zero. Uh, now, if you want the probability that you and your partner, or you, you, with or without your partner, will be alive, that's given by the height of the, the total bars. So here, the height at this point is the height indicating that you will be alive alone plus the probability that you and your partner will be alive. And so the sum of those is the probability you'll be alive one way or the other. The red bars are the probability that your partner alone will be alive. And you see those are yet to be fairly large as time goes on, diminishing, of course, eventually uh, out in very far future years. Now, if you wanted to see the probability that your partner will be alive with or without you, you would have to go back and redo the settings so that she becomes you and you become the partner. Then you could look at the height of, of both of the bars. So that's basically it. We can press the up arrow and get some information as to where these come from. And we can press it again to make it go away. And also, when we go back to the main page, the help key will tell you that to find out much, much more about all of the capabilities of the software, you should read retirementincomescenarios.blogspot.com, where I go into great and gory detail about all these issues. Okay, so let's press the left arrow, which takes you back to the main settings and action page. And you'll recall that in the description it said that you should press shift plus the green flag if you want more speed. That puts Scratch in what's called turbo mode. You can turn it on and off if you'd like with a shift and a click on the green flag. But that can make a very substantial difference in speed. And let me show you how substantial. Let's press longevity graph again. Bang. There it is. It's done all the things that we saw before very slowly, uh, but it's done them very rapidly. So that is the longevity graph. Longevity is a major part of planning for and making projections of future retirement income, and it underlies virtually all the analysis that will come in later segments. So I hope you will use it. I encourage you on the Scratch site to establish your own account. It's free, and that will allow you to store versions of this with different settings on the Scratch site. Or you can store them on your own computer if that is more satisfactory from a privacy standpoint. And if you so choose, you can download a version of the Scratch system so that you can both run and store versions of this on your own computer, which would, of course, give you the maximum uh, available privacy. So I hope you, will you found this interesting, and there will be much more to come.